Kumlen and Abad Kumara, we are up to the Mem Beis Ahmed Allah's on top of the page. And the subject matter we're going to be learning today, we're continuing on the idea that one person makes a nether to ban the other person from joining. And, um, and we were just beginning. Okay. So, um, and when it comes to, uh, so we're going to talk about a case again, Reuben and Shimon, where Shimon said to Reuben, you cannot have any benefit from me. And it's going into the year of Shemitah. Now comes Shemitah, we know that um, Shemitah, and we'll talk about a very interesting Machlekes, which is fascinating, because really all revolves around this Gemara here. But the, the, the uh, people who argue don't bring this Gemara here. But you can see it's all here. Um, the Shemitah, so there's two things. Shemitah, the, the, the field becomes Hefker, the, the fruits become Hefker to enable anybody to walk in and take your fruit from you. But what happens the following? And this, as we'll see, there are two ways of learning the following Mishnah. Two ways based on the Gemara. And two ways where the Shemitah and Shemitah Gemara. Okay, so the Mishnah. <laughs> so let's say Reuben was forbidden to have any benefit from Shimon, and I did it in the sixth year of the cycle, at the time when the field was totally mine, belonged to Shimon, and he banned Reuben from entering the field. Any Hano, then Shimon, then Reuben obviously cannot enter that field. Not only can he enter the field, if the, if the branches are overhanging into the public street and the fruit growing, he cannot take it. It belongs to, the, to this person. Uba Shvius. What about the seventh year? Now there's two ways of learning Shatnas Gemara here. Uba Shvius is what happens if the person made the nether on the seventh year and he said, on the seventh year, he said, Reuben, you're forbidden, it's forbidden for you to have any pleasure from me whatsoever. But in the year of Shmita, the property didn't belong to me. So therefore, what am I asking you? My property, I can't ask her, a property doesn't belong to me. It's Hefke. Then Enu Yuele today. So the land itself, I can ban you from. I will but I cannot ban you from the fruits that are standing outside. Because even in a Shemitah, the field is not hefka, it's only hefka to go and to eat. As we'll see tomorrow later, at least it's hefka to go to eat. Why can't the guy walk in to eat and then walk right out? So that's when we had the Yokum before. We'll talk about it later tomorrow. But the tea the, 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 the is Hanoitis, any branches overhanging the street, they're hefka. So you can take them. That's one way long shot. The other way shot is that it's not two separate cases, it's a continuation. That even though I made the nether in the sixth year, and during the sixth year, it's forbidden for you to enter my property, but comes the seventh year, in the same scenario, you can walk in now into my property. Because even though I made a nether in the sixth year at the time when it belonged to me, but once the property no longer belongs to me, the Easter does not continue with it. Okay, we'll see any more two ways of learning. Um, that's okay. Okay. Not that he meant my. What I, I said to you, I didn't say to you that you're not allowed to have any enough from me. So I don't want you to eat from me. Then, if I did in the sixth year, you're usually allowed to walk into my field. You can never ban walking into my field. But the ain't no the You cannot eat from the fruits. But a bishvius, when it comes to the year of Shemitah, then come to your Shemitah. He goes in and he can eat because the property you're allowed to walk into and the fruits are not mine anymore. So they're mutter. Okay, Gemara. So we have two ways of learning the Gemara. Now this is how the Gemara thinks in the beginning. Rabbi Shmuel Damitavayu, Rabbi Shmuel will say. Now before we continue, there's a there's a nechassim elu and there's nechassai. If I say these words nechassai, my estate. So my estate can be interpreted as as long as this belongs to me, it is forbidden to you. My assets are forbidden to you. But the moment these assets are no longer mine, they're hefker, I and not forbidden to you. If I said Nechosim Elu can be interpreted, this property is forbidden to you. I don't care if it still belongs to me, it doesn't belong to me. I don't care if I sold it to a third party. You're forbidden, and, and right now it's mine, so I can put an Easter on it. The Easter remains forever. That's how we can interpret. However, the Gemara is going to seem to say, according to most of Shain, not that most of Shain learn, that, that Rabbi Shmuel and Shlok Rabbi Yechen had a big argument, and they don't care what you say. They don't care the wording. They care more the halachic principle. And the lucky principle in question here is, can I place a ban on something even be after it's no longer my ownership? Whatever, you, whatever, you, whatever terms I use, but once I sold the property to somebody else or became half care, that the ban that I put in place while I was mine still continue lingers on, or well, that's it. It dissipates. It's gone. It vanishes. What, what would be the half a minute to say that he has a ticket to it? Because, because, I, because once I... It's not because when I did it, it was mine. So I the know, Easter, once, I because once the Easter, where did it disappear? 
No, it doesn't. Nobody's saying it. We learn it before certain things. Mafki is a shibud, and uh, but selling doesn't take away the isra to you. The isra remains forever. That's one more things right now. We'll see later whether that's the case or not. We'll see later. And the Ran, however, puts in a, a middle case where if you said nechosai elu, that's one step lower than uh, the chosim elu, but one step higher than the chosai. Because he added the word elu, said when nechosai, where does that go? And then he makes a whole thing out of that. But we won't follow that. I'm going to go more than here. The thing more. Rabbi Shmuel, they say, they both say that elu. So what elu is what they're going is whether it's nechosai elu or nechosim elu. That even a lecha, that even if you use these words, the chosim elu lecha. They say that sorry. They say right now that if you said the word nechosim elu, then the, the isa remains even in the year of shmita. And the gemara will exp- understand that the reason is not because he used the word nechosim elu. It's irrelevant. It's pedantic. It's not relevant. What is relevant is that Rabbi Shmuel both will hold that once the isa was put into place while it's in my ownership, it can continue on beyond my ownership. But the imbish is just so that's the first duration of the mishnah. And then the next case in the mission is the means the im bashri is not that if you, you made the net in the year of Shemitah when the land and not belong to you anyway, the field still belongs to Shimon, so therefore he can put an Isra on it. I will he definitely can eat the fruits. Now, why he why the field belongs to me in Shemitah when the din is clearly that it's hefker uh, for uh, what do you call it, uh, to, for people to be able to walk in to take the fruits? So that the Gemara will talk at the end of the Gemara. Okay, came along Abiyach and Reish Lakish, and Abiyach and Lakish heard what Rabbi Shmuel said in Babel, and Abiyach and Lakish, they both say, they both say that no, Nechosai Olecha, Lifnei Shviz, if you said it before, Shemitah, Ein Yoyle Tersei, in the sixth year, you cannot walk in the field, Ve'ein Noichum and Anmeitah, you cannot eat it because it's Chau, obviously no Kiddush there, but a Gia Shviz, that very nether you made in the sixth year, and even though the nether was Chau, it was a valid nether, Comes the seventh year, comes Shmita, when everything is hefkes, you cannot walk into the field because the net there was, you know, the field is whatever we'll see later. I will oichulus on but you can eat the night, the isa is gone. It disappears. Comes the end of the seventh year, it disappears. That's what it means, seems. <clears throat> so, Lema, let us say, this is the argument. Rabbi Shmuel Sabri, Rabbi Shmuel hold Adam Isa Dover Shabir. Rabbi Shmuel hold that when I put the Easter into place, it was mine, and that Easter remains even with, beyond my ownership. So there's always, it's not the gay you hear the fact that I use the words Nechosimelu. It's irrelevant. I could have used the words Nechosai, and which would mean only while it's my estate. It would, once the Easter is how it remains forever. And Rabbi Yechon Ishlaki Savri, Rabbi Yechon Ishlaki told, ain't no the Maishas Dover Shusai, the Shiyatim Shusai. That they hold that once that the Isa only remains while I'm the Balbas, and once I'm no longer the Balbas, the Isa just disappears again, doesn't matter the wording. Says the Gemara, Im Kain, if the wording doesn't matter, then how come Rabbi Shmuel used that for the word the Chosimeru? And why did the Rabbi use the word the Chosai? Im Kain, if so, Niflik min the Chosim Elu, the Chosim which came in the Chosai. Let them argue by the Chosim Elu, which the Chosim Elu, you could say, Lechayda, should the Isra should continue even beyond my ownership, because the Chosai Lechayda clearly means Kolzman, they belong to me. If I use the word the Chosim Elu, these, these assets, whether they're mine or not, and yet, Rabbi Rabbi Yechonish Lakish say, once it comes year seven, it's no longer his. The Easter is gone. So you know, so the same thing could be over here. So, 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 so what's what do you have to change the wording for? Just talk about this very principle. Does the Easter remain beyond my ownership or not? Simple as that. That's question one. So that's a question understanding their argument. And then two, we have a quite a technical question as well. The Su how did now we learned in the Mishnah? Hard to be learned. Adam, I said, Dover Shibbis Shusai, look, she ate some Shusai. We'll clearly, we could, I'll bring a knife from Mishnah that a person puts an Issa into place. The Issa continues beyond his ownership. And what's that? If not, we learned, if somebody says to his son, coin him, I treat, I make everything that I have like a carbon of it's all should be forbidden. Shout to Nanny Lee. I forbid everything from you to have any benefit from me. I have displeasure with your behavior or whatever you did. I'm cutting you off. Mace, if this person dies, you're Shenu. This person dies, then the child, you know, I don't want you to have enough for me, but as long as there's no me around anymore, 
then okay, then the child can yash from the father. But what happens if he adds the words, he says, I don't, I'm cutting you out today and from the will, I don't want you to have anything to do anymore with our family. Then he makes it, even if the person dies, lo yishanu, the guy doesn't inherit, inherit anymore. What do we see from here clearly? That I could put an Easter into place even beyond my uh, the person's life. And the Torah says it's automatic. When you yash it, it's automatic. So it should go there. And yet I can, it's not that I took your money away from you and I gave it to somebody else. I just said, I want you to be a Yodish. I don't want you to have anything to do with my estate. It's als neder. It's as like a neder that you don't have any benefit. And the neder continues beyond the person's life. So we see clearly from here that a person can make an isa today. And even though it's no longer the shows, once it's dead, you don't own anything once you're dead. Everything is, you're no longer about the boss. And the isa remains. So when answer shiny hocha, there's different, the ka'amal, for not the reason you're thinking, but the amal, he clearly spelled out the chai of a moise. What it seems to be saying, in principle, you're right. In principle, an isa can linger on afterwards, because once you put the isa in place, it remains. And if you clearly spell that out, the chai of a moise, then even after the person dies, the child can inherit. In al didn't he didn't say that. It's either the chasim elu or the chasai. But if he would have clearly said, I want that we should be forbidden, even in the year of then it wouldn't be any argument. And you know, even when Sefka, the issue goes on. It's because he didn't say that specifically, he just said the Chosimel and the Chosai, which we're saying right now is really irrelevant. The Issa does not continue on onward. Okay, Makom, Makom, Kashin. But the question still remains. Why are they arguing? Why are they arguing in the Chosimel and the Chosai? What's the difference? So now the Gemara is going to modify the whole thing. The Gemara is going to say as follows. <clears throat> the Gemara is going to say, <clears throat> Um, Ella, Menachasim Elu. If he, the wording is very important. The wording is very important. If he would have said Menachasim Elu, Shimon would have said to Reuben, "These Menachasim are forbidden to you." Then Kuli Amla Pligi. There's no argument. It comes here Shmita. There's still Menachasim Elu, and the Issa remains. No, but if you say the Menachasim Elu, the Issa does remain with this this property. <coughs> then it goes on forever. Keep plea. Where do we argue? It's like you make a carbon uh, uh, kaidish, and let's say kachim kalim, if, if, if it's your mum, and you sell to somebody, it doesn't become always kaidish. It still remains kaidish. So we hear also, if you said nechosim elu, even though they're no longer mine, it's us. Awesome. Keep plea. You know what they're arguing? Bin nechosai. They're arguing when you said the word nechosai. So that, that's one of the things right now. Rabbish mo sabi, rabbish mo hold. That the Isa remains for Loishna, the Chosim Elu, Loishna, the Chosai, the Chosai. Makes no difference. Other Moisa. Once the Isa is there, even though he said the Chosai and the and the property now moved beyond him, it doesn't matter. It always remains us. But Rabbi Yechen, the Shlakish hold that no. That nechasim elu other mice. We said nechasim elu. Okay, you, you talk about the nechasim. The isra remains, but nechasai. If you clearly said my nechasim, it's only as long as it's mine. Ain't other mice there. Once it leaves as a truth, it no longer remains us. <clears throat> Says the Gemara, still not happy. So you're still telling me they're still arguing about this fundamental argument. The isra remains, and the question is only when the wording can be interpreted that way. In other words, you're saying everyone agrees the chosim elu the isra remains even Rabbi Shmuel. They're only arguing by the chosai. Once the isra goes, even though you said the chosai, according to Rabbi Shmuel, once the isra is chal, how does the isra leave? We had a few days, uh, a few weeks ago. Isra doesn't just just die like pumpkin. You can't just leave on it by itself. So therefore, Rabbi Shmuel hold where you more understands now. Once the isra is chal, it stays. And the as long as they know, it's like you made it tonight. Only while it's nechosai, and the moment it's no longer nechosai, the issue disappears. Says the Gemara, um, command Omer, is there an opinion that loishon that loishon nechosim a loishon nechosai? Are you going to tell me that uh, that Rav Shmuel is so machmed that there's no difference whether he says nechosai and nechosim a loishon? They hold even nechosai; these remains. I'll show you from another halacha that there's a major difference. But now we learned, we will learn. Somebody says his friend. Koinem, I make it like a carbon that I will not walk into your house. To me, your house is like a carbon, but he used the word beisecha, your house, which is like nechosa, right? Yours, mine. Shani nichnes, I will walk in. Or if I buy the field from you, you should know that'll be us. Awesome. Don't don't pester me to buy it for you because I'm it's, it's, I'm not going to use it. Mace, let's say the guy died. 
It's no longer base It's no longer his house. Or no longer sotcha. Mutter. He's permitted. Oh, but if he said lebaize, this house will be forbidden to me. Shani nichnis. Sada zu. Shani lekech. This field will be forbidden to me. Meis. Beis mochlachin ha'aslasa. What does he clearly mean? There's a major distinction. Whether you say base cha or you say you know baize. So the same thing here. Big difference. The chasai or the chasimelu. The chasimelu should remain forever. The chasai is only cause man. It's mine. So what's Abish Shmuel saying that the chasai is also forever? Ella says he is actually no machlekes. Then that you know why they gave different examples because they're not talking about the same thing. Ki ambi Rabbi Yechidish Shlaki Rabbi Yechidish Shlaki is talking about the chasai. Rabbi Yechidish Shlaki is talking about the chasai. And Rabbi Shmuel with the chasim elu. Rabbi Yechidish Rabbi Yechidish Shlaki is saying he said the chasai. That's why they say in the year Shmita it's not us. And why? Because he said the chasai calls man is mine. Come Shmita is no longer us. Therefore, you could you know you could walk into the into the field, or you can walk in, and at least if you can eat the, um, the fruit. Why you can't walk in the field with Sile? Uh, but Rabbi Shmuel said, but the elu. Whether Rabbi, um, so Rabbi Shmuel learned the Mishnah clearly, the Mishnah and the Chasim elu. So the very beginning of the Mishnah talking about you made the Ned in the sixth year, and that's why the Easter remains in the seventh year. If in, and, this, and the next thing is the Shri, it means you made a Ned in the seventh year. Because if you made a Ned in the Chasim elu in the sixth year, the Easter would remain into the seventh year. So therefore, they're talking about two different cases. Mashen Kain, Rav Yechen, and Shlokish could be talking about um, what do you call it? that? In the, in the, he's talking about the Chosai, and therefore the sixth year it's also, and the very it's, the seventh year is not a it's not the mission of Ashri. It's not talking about a different case, the very same case. That Neda that you made in the Chosai during the sixth year, the Easter is in place. During the seventh year, you can walk it. So, <coughs> and you can put. So, um, so the machlek is showing him if Rabbi Yechon and Ishlak is agree pshat in the Mishnah that we're talking about the Chos and and therefore it's two different cases, Reish and Sefer, because they have a problem. What's a kund Rabbi Yechon? What's the chiddush in the Reish? What is the chiddush? Um, what, what's the chiddush in the Reish? I mean, I mean, it says the Chos side. That's anyway. But the bottom line is they're not arguing. We're late pleading. The Ran actually wonders why the whole Gemara Rabbi Shmuel's name is first, and then Rabbi Yechon Shlakish, and why over here we change it around. The Ran. You see, the lines are all very long, but the Ran here is a Mefarish, and he goes into like a real Rosh He goes into every Ooh. single word, every word the Gemara wants to understand why they changed the order. So he says, in the beginning, the Gemara thought there's an argument. If there's an argument, the Rabbi Shmuel made the case first. Rabbi Yechazlak heard about it, because Tamid used to go back and forth. They came out and argued. Now the Gemara suddenly realizes that Bechah would talk about the same thing. So obviously, Rabbi Yechazlak is going to share somewhere. And then we gave Rabbi Yechazlak his put older, so we gave them them first. So they're not actually not Rabbi Yechazlak was younger than Rabbi, as we know. Another thing we learned that Rab and Rabbi Yechon both in, learned by Rebbe together, and um, and what do you call? It? And uh, remember the Gemara we had the Shlokis Rabbi Yechon, who's Rab? And Rab told, remember the fire that we saw there in, in the yeshiva that was about Rab, he was a great man. But anyway, if it's two in places, so we give Kavod Edges all first and then two to bubbles. So we gave Rabbi Yechon's name first. So like Pligian, there's no argument whatsoever. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Says the Gemara. Now let's understand. Uber Shvi says, "Ain goyu terzei." Shvi still cannot walk into the field. Now lochayda it's shvita, it's hefker. You allowed to eat the fruits. We also allowed to walk into the field. Says the Gemara. I don't understand. Uber Shvi says, "There maish not the oichel men anaitis." Why can you eat from the fruit? Because shvita, everything is hefker. The peder, the hefker, the inu. I don't know me hefker. The land is also hefker. I'll come back to that in a minute. Omar Ula, so Ula gives an interesting answer. Ula says, We're talking about that. When does the taters, when do you allow, when do you say the fields have in order for you to able to eat the fruits? But because the fruits are hanging over or are hanging outside, there's no reason to walk into the field. So there's no reason for the title to make the field have care. You can stand outside in the street and eat the fruits. So therefore, you have the right to walk in. <coughs> so, <coughs> so no, no, sorry, Ula says, but I'm in the and the trees are standing right there on the ground, it's on the, on the boundary. And therefore, why, why should you walk into the field? You can stand outside and eat and, and eat the fruits. Machlek is a shiny, but what happened? You dafka want the fruits that are inside the field, are you allowed to walk in there or not? But, um, the, and therefore, in this case, there's no right to you walk in the field. You can stand outside. Rav Shimon Yochum, we had a few days in the Gemara. Zeda Shemayisha Bamida. It's only hefker as far as eating the fruits. So what? Once you ate the fruits, Machik is showing him only to take the fruits or even to eat, stand there and eat as well. But once you, you, you've, you've you've consumed the fruits, if you linger about, 
you want to marvel the beautiful trees there or whatever, then you're over Aveda. Why you're over, it's no longer Hefker, and there's a nether, the nether kicks in. So that's why we're geyser by Amida. When you, we learned before about a chayla, you let her walk in, you're not, you should stand and not sit. And we're sitting, we say, you're going to be the longer than you have to. And why wouldn't we worry about standing, you're going to be longer than you have to. So the Ran says, the very fact that we don't allow you to sit and force you to stand will remind you, because most people usually sit and you'll stand, they'll remind you, not so long. Now, what's very interesting as follows, there's a marit, a long marit and the, and the machleik, the Yosef. Um, this idea that Schmidt is hefker, is that Automatic, mm. or is that is, it's a mitzvah on the bala boss of the farmer mm-hmm. to make it feel hefker. So there's a big argument. And it's just as clearly is it that it's it's, it's, um, it's automatic. Other uh, says that the bala boss has to, sorry, all the way around. Says that the bala boss has to do it. It's a mitzvah to capture the governor, but the person has to go make hefker. If he didn't, it's not hefker, but he's even available. And according to Marit, and they bring all the shrine, but they don't bring here. I'm going to show you something. The gifts. If you look here, the Peter Sharosh, right in the middle. The last word line is Ara, it's a big word. Mm-hmm. Ara, Nami, and our Gemara it says Ara, what is it? Ara, Nami, Afkara, right? But look what he adds Ara, Nami, Rachmana, Afkara, potatoes, Mafkara. Then you look in Tasis, in Tasis here on the side, his gear is right in the middle. First word line is Ara. If you see right there, Ara, Nami, Hefkeru. Right, so his gears are like our gears, but look what he says then afterwards. The after Achman and the Shachila, two to shine already. They say clearly that it's the Torah that makes it Hefker, not you. But regardless of what you do, it is Hefker. Then you have the Ran, Ran here by eight lines at the bottom of the page. Aaron Nami Rachmana Afker, the Torah Mafker. Then you look at the shame in the back, Muka Yosef and all that. They all have Rachmana, every one of them. So. One of the Kharanim there, I saw him when they quote the Rosh, he says the Tazat Fus. But you look, Tasis is not Tazat Fus, he's actually giving a Hezbo. Well, clear. The, the word Achman. No, no, no. The Rosh is, is the Tazat Fus. No, the Rosh has a wrong because Algamon says, no, it doesn't say the word Achman. Like the Bessiosa, Bessiosa says that it's not the Achman, it's you have a mitzvah. But I'm saying, you look at Tasis clearly, it wasn't in his gear, so yet he explains that the Abishta made it Hefker. And you're looking at the show in the back, with the Yasef and the Ritva there as well. Same thing. So surprising that they don't bring it down in the Marit and all that to bring. They all bring the Gemara, Rashi and Rosh Hashanah. That's as well. Where Rashi, there's two Machlek, we had a Machlek about Eshig, the sixth year going to the seventh year. The Hanotta was the sixth year. We had to blossom the sixth year and then flourish till the seventh year. Lakita was the seventh year. What do you go after? The Hanotta or after the Lakita? So we have the sixth and seventh. Machlek is Rabba Rabba Nuna. And Rabbi Nuna, by Rabbi Nuna, Rash, uh, by Rabbi Nuna, Rashi's expression that the Tater didn't make the field have good. Uh, or the Tater didn't make the field have good. He used Rahmana. But by the Rabbi, Rashi uses, and he didn't make it have good. So they say that the first Rashi is a mistake, and the second Rashi is what you have to do. But really, it seems that Rashi learned that group is the machlegs of Rabbi Rabbi Nuna, the idea of Hefker and Shemitah, whether it's a Tater, whether you, and that explains and from the shape another time. Let's just do the next Mishnah. There's a Mishnah. Hamudna no Again, Reuven was forbidden to have any Hanar from Shimon. He's lo yashi lenu, lo yisho You shouldn't lend anything to Reuven. Obviously, you're giving him Hanar. But nor should you borrow from Reuven. And that doesn't make sense. What's wrong with borrowing from Reuven? How are you giving him Hanar by borrowing from him? In fact, you're, you're using it. You're wear and tear. We'll see in a minute. Lo lo yil venu, lo yil. The difference between Shaila and Halva is like all the Shem say here. We'll see in other places. Shaila is when I borrow and I have to return to you the very same object you gave me. Halva is when I borrow money, I don't return you. Biblical it's on it. And the moment I take it in my pocket, like Rashi says in the beginning of Matsya, it's no longer yours. I don't have to give you the same money. So I shouldn't lend you money, which you can understand, but I shouldn't borrow from him money. What's wrong with that? We'll see. Don't sell to him. And don't buy from him. So um, we had three different kinds of sales, a desperate sale, an average sale, or a sale which is in high demand. So passions we're talking about here, somebody's trying to say a regular sale, by a regular sale, but this is how she learns, a regular sale, they both have pleasure. So you shouldn't sell, nor should you buy. That makes sense. And um, uh, what about if it's a hard, um, if you sell it to him for more than the price? So therefore, uh, he has no enough from it. Or if you buy from him for less than the price, he has no enough from it, maybe you're allowed to. Other shame holds in all cases, not allowed. Says what we don't understand. Please explain why you vendor come handle it. And understand why you shouldn't lend him because he's you, he's benefiting from you. And like you, the men might come handle it. What's only borrowing from him? Please explain why you, the hey men who talk about, um, tomorrow's, I guess, 
I can argue. You want here? I can argue in a limited case that you know if you borrow money from him, there's an advantage to the lender. You know the lender advantages that when you borrow from him, he might give you coins poor quality, dollar bills that are falling apart, and you return them a, a, a brand new bills. Okay, he got he gained something. You can learn. That's what Misha is talking about. In a case where there's hana to the to the lender as well, don't borrow money from the guy that you made you asked the hana. They should have enough from you. Uh, the same thing. Sometimes you know. Sometimes you buy from him if it's something that he can't sell anywhere else. So if I'm buying it from him, I'm doing him a favor. So maybe that's what Misha is talking about, right? Ella, this is called the Ape, which they read in his face. It's, it's, you can see his face looks miserable. Ella Yishulimen, borrowing from him. What's wrong with borrowing? From him? Might come his hand in it. Other is wearing tear, and he's worried that might break it and so on. So Omar basically, you're right. Talking about Gnishan, no, Johan, no, Azem is that they banned each other from having any benefit from each other, and that's why I cannot borrow from him, he cannot borrow from him. But Rabbi says, no, Gzeda, we are worried, Lisha, the reason why we don't allow you to borrow from him, Mishum Lahashil, if you're going to have that kind of relationship where you can borrow, then tomorrow you might lend him, Nochma, you might feel guilty that you borrow from him, not lend him, and what is it? The Chaim Bechul Gzeda, in all other cases as well, we're not talking about specific cases, we're talking limited cases, we're talking about is a Gzeda that if you go one way, you'll go the other way as well. Okay, that concludes today's Gemara. We'll continue tomorrow in Mitzvah Shem. Have a good day, everybody.